Welcome to Greater Faith Outreach Ministries, reaching the world with the love of God. Hello, everyone. This is Greater Faith Outreach Ministry. We're back with you. Hi. <laughs> Glad to have you back with us. We always have some wonderful programs on, but this one is especially, mm -hmm. it's just something about yeah. this program and this lady, boy, I'm telling you, you're going to have to listen to this in its entirety because she has a lot to share with you. She has a very caring heart and I talked to her briefly and she's doing so much for so many, but we're not going to use her name because of the danger she could be in because she helps so many kids and all over the world. But uh, today's guest is Lydia. Say hello, Lydia. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Miss Bellevue Washington, my co-host. Hello. Wendy's out. She'll be back next week. Yes. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. I hope you're watching <laughs> yeah. us. <laughs> we love you. Right. But we're going to get started um, because, like I said, this is a very, very vital program. You know, and I was thinking about foster care and the children that age out at 18. Where do they go? What happens to those children? So Lydia is going to give us a little information on that. And the name of her ministry is called Evidence of Grace. So tell us, what happened to these foster care children when they age out? Usually when they age out at 18, um, they either go into a, the, the state will try and find a place for them to go, okay? Mm -hmm. If they can't, they usually end up in the streets. Mm -hmm. And so, and there's a large majority of them that do end up there because of the fact that the situation that they're in, there are some good foster homes. Mm -hmm but there are more bad than there are good. And a lot of them are just there for the money themselves. So when the girls or boys um, age out at 18, mm -hmm. the state gives them a stipend. Mm -hmm. And so once they receive that stipend, the caregiver loses the money. Okay. And so that's why they want them out is so they can get someone else back in. So if they do not have a place to go, they usually end up in the streets. They can't afford to get any type of housing mm -hmm. when they're only going to get about 703 a month. Mm -hmm. Even if they take someone else into an apartment with them, they still can't afford it. So they end up in the streets. Mm -hmm. And it only takes about three days once in the streets before they're picked up by a pimp oh, God. and trafficked. So. Okay. So let's back up a little bit here. Okay. What is your passion? Why are you so passionate about this subject here, about the foster care? Um, I actually was a foster child that aged out. Okay. Yes. And so you experienced, you know. Yes, okay. I have, yeah. Okay. Um, I was blessed, though. I had a wonderful foster mother that um, was there for us. Um, but she did, it, she was a widow and she opened up her home um, for six girls mm -hmm. um, and they would come through and it was a receiving home before they would go into a foster home. And she took me on as her only foster child. Mm -hmm. So I got to experience and learn a lot about the different mm -hmm. types of abuse and I just saw so much heartache. Mm -hmm. um, and I was 14 at the time, so mm -hmm. I was there four years. And had gone through my own trauma mm -hmm. through um, family members. And so, it, yeah, it's kind of circled around to me. I've been fighting against human trafficking for, um, it's going on almost 16 years now. 16 years. Yeah. Wow. And I wanted to just briefly read this, what you shared mm -hmm. with me. It's uh, your mission. It says, they, uh, <clears throat> they, the children, the foster care children, mm -hmm. are most vulnerable uh, in this evil battle against human trafficking. Thousands of lives are lost each year to the horrific evil, and it is evil. Mm, it is. And thousands upon thousands are coerced in the traps and the in slavery each year in the United States and abroad. Right. Abroad orphans age out, orphanage, mm -hmm. either orphanage, every day, with evil weighing uh, outside the gate. Many are abused in the orphanages and, uh, in, and in their own va in villages. In America, foster children aged out 
of their homes around 18. But it, in other countries, it's a little different. And you deal with children in other countries as well. Right. And we talked about some horrific things that mm -hmm. you saw right. and that you dealt with at that airport. Could you talk about that mm -hmm. before we jump into anything else? Mm -hmm. Because I was like blown away. Or are you talking about the one in Uganda? Or Uganda. The Uganda. Yes. Okay. Um, we had, we were going over to check on the ministries in Uganda mm -hmm. or in, um, in Kenya. Uh -huh. And along the way, I had to stop in Dubai. Wow. And mm -hmm. I had a 13-hour layover. Mm -hmm. And I uh, had a lady with me. It was her first time ever to Africa. And um, we were sitting on one end, and the, the Lord kept saying to me, go to the other end and sit. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going down there and sitting, and I, the Lord sat me right in the middle of 10 women mm -hmm. that had been trafficked to mm -hmm. Dubai from Uganda two years prior. Mm -hmm. And they were being sent back to Uganda with return tickets mm -hmm. to get two more girls each. Mm -hmm. And um, I was sitting there and I was um, crocheting and making some pads I that I was going to um, mm -hmm. teach the other girls how to make for an income. And she came over and sat next to me, this one woman, and mm -hmm. asked what I was doing. I told her and I told her what we did. And she said, looked at me and just said, we've just been trafficked. So she told me her story and how the only thing that saved her from not being killed um, oh. the whole time was that she fasted and she prayed. Um, they did ex expect her to change her religion. She refused, but because she fasted, they respected her. Yeah. And so um, she said that was the only thing that that saved her and that she witnessed lots of incidences where and I know this is true because of what the work I work with mm -hmm. the people I've um, dealt with if they don't like you they will take you to a clinic they'll say they're taking you to get a checkup mm -hmm. um, you go in they give you a shot that's part of the checkup but what that shot does is it puts you uh, puts them out and in that meantime, they take out a kidney, <gasps> and this mm -hmm. kidney is to replace what they feel they are, have lost mm -hmm. in the tickets to get them there. And so they wake up, the, oh, the woman has it. the passport and visa on her chest, and the, she is sent home. If she lives, she lives. If she dies, she dies. Mm. There's, no, there's no concern whatsoever. Mm. And so they don't find out they've actually lost a kidney. They just know they, they've gone through surgery until they go back to Uganda and or wherever. Mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, in this situation, it was Uganda. Um, and it was, uh, I was a part of being able, to, God used me to stop a trafficking ring in Madagascar where they trafficked right. 500 girls a month. To Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Yeah, and most of them came back dead. Um, there are those that survived. They came back in coffins. They came back with um, acid thrown in their faces. Mm. This actually was on the TV here yeah. several years ago. Yeah. There was, but you've seen all of this. I've seen all of yes. it, yes. Uh -huh. And this is so real. Yeah, it is. What would you say about that, Elizabeth? What's I going just, on? I just lost world. my words. I just, I know. I'm it's, trying not so hard not to cry right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and these are just women that, um, in those situations, are just women that want work mm -hmm. and yeah. work to help their families. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to this one woman. They came in. She was a tailor. They came in, and they a woman said, "Would you like to take your job to the next level?" Mm -hmm. And she's curious, of what course. What does that mean? And so they said, well, if you go and you work over here for two years with a contract, you can save the money, come back, and then take your business to the next level. You know, get more employees, you can buy more machines. And so she, she fell into it. But when she realized when she got there, she wasn't getting any money. Mm -hmm. The only money that was given to her was to assist her with her feminine hygiene. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. She wasn't allowed to eat with the family. Um, she was only allowed to eat what was left on the plates after she had served them all. She was not allowed to cook for herself. Um, so she was, she was literally a slave. 
And this is what happens all the time. <clears throat> all the time. All the time. And the National Center for Missing and Exploited Kids, 92 are runaways. Approximately 82 out of the 92 are foster, foster children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and just in Pierce County alone, I was told by the social workers and um, the YMCA that just in Pierce County alone, 50 age out a month. Mm. So you take that, however many are yeah. going to end up on the streets out of that. Yeah, yeah. I just was told that, um, and I don't know how true this is, but I was just told that the state was going to raise the the age to 21 so that they can stay in the foster, foster care, care and finish high school. But that still doesn't take care of those who need to get out of there. And the first thing they're going to think when they turn 18 is my situation is situation is so bad I need to get out mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. they feel that going to the streets is a whole lot better than the situation that they're in yeah. so those are the ones that we're looking to help um, as we try to move forward with the transition house yes and it's a lot here that needs to be helped as well oh, I know yes. you go abroad but it's a lot here There's a lot here yes yes, yes. yeah yes so uh, tell us how before the time runs out, we want to make sure we get the help that okay. you need. Right. Okay. How can we help? I know we can pray and, you know, yes. we can volunteer and different things. So you tell us, what can we do? Well, right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to get some houses put together. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to, if there's anyone out there that has a house that they'd be willing to gift mm -hmm. or um, just let us use for the uh -huh. to start but well, we need to put together a transition house for those kids that are uh -huh. stuck and need to be mm -hmm. um in a place instead of the streets we want to be able to offer that because right now they don't have that mm -hmm. um a shelter doesn't last very long yeah, no and it gets them right. caught up in and in the hooks of yeah, it yeah. and so we're looking to be able to find a place out towards the country more mm -hmm. so we can keep them out of the hooks of the city mm -hmm and still be able to where they can still work but the transition home would be they would have their own room they would pay for it as an apartment mm -hmm. and uh, just give them a safe environment to transition into adulthood okay do you have any idea of how many are aging out each month turning 18 just in Pierce county uh -huh. just in Pierce county alone they told me 50. 50. A month. Each month. Each month. 18. That was an approximate. 50 yeah. children at the age 18 yes. are out there on the streets. Yes. Because, you know, when they get some kids, you know, they just want to escape. They want to get out. You know, I'm yeah. 18 now. Yeah. But they don't know how these streets are. Right. Exactly. You know? You're right. And that, that sense, I've worked a lot with the homeless um, in the areas here mm -hmm. in Washington, and it's, it doesn't take long. When we were working with the, the homeless, um, just like say in Kent, for instance, mm -hmm. um, we had exactly three days. If, if we could get it, get to them in three days, yeah. we would be lucky because we needed to get them out of there. There are boys that are homeless and that's their goal mm -hmm. is to get to these girls that are homeless, just coming out of foster care or have run away from home, um, get them. And as soon as they get them, they give them the drugs. Once they feel they're addicted enough, they hand them off. And then they get paid for what they've just handed yes, off, yes. whether that be in drugs or it be in cash. So yes. it's it's this whole system. Yes. I mean, they've got it down. And a lot of it now, you know, is more so online, mm -hmm. as we all mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still out there. It's a lot out it's there. It's still out there on yes. the streets, yes. yes. And I'm so glad that yes. you're willing to help do oh, something because it's so by many the out there. Yeah. yeah, by the power of God, yes. you know, and there's so many out there. And after they get, get you know, help, they need healing. Right. You know, That's after right. we bring them in, right. their souls need to be healed mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So we're praying and asking that you guys would come aboard. At least pray. Pray for these children that's out there because yes. they're they're open prey to the enemy. That's right. They're open. They are. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because they're they're on the hunt. Because I was talking to as we were talking at the mall, mm -hmm. we talked to uh, someone who said that he see the girls coming in, in and out of the mall being picked up from there. Yes. You know? Oh, they're all yeah. They're yeah. in the malls looking yes. for them. Yeah. 
<sighs> yeah, they're everywhere. So it's, you know, that it's yes. really, education is really important. Yes. You yes, educate yes, your daughters yes. and your sons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, as, you know, educate yourself and then educate yeah. them. And yeah. it's hard because they're in that age group of 13 to 18. You right. know, they're at this kind of a um, rebellious age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why they're so... <laughs> vulnerable, vulnerable yes. because they are rebellious and the traffickers know it mm -hmm. and so it's easy for them to coerce them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to get them to do what they want just mm -hmm. you know it's um they're not being loved here so i'm yeah. gonna love them yeah. and yeah you know i'm gonna give them what they want yeah. but they don't realize what's on the other end of that yes and again, they need so much yes, healing, healing after yes, that yeah. because some of the stories that I've heard and you shared with me about these kids being locked up for yes. days and just like meat, like yes. animals, you right, know, right. and just mm -hmm. being let out just to have sex right. with other men, with men. And it's just a horrible thing. And, you know, their souls are so bruised and damaged. Do they right. think they're always you know yeah. no good and, they, and a lot of them yeah. do they don't think yeah. they have anything else yes yes that they can do in life and so it, yes. it is it's a it's a process um it's a long journey yes of healing but it is possible the healing is possible and that's we have a lot of of people that have come alongside to help with that um we have a lot of experience in there Mm -hmm. to be able to help in these transition homes. Okay. And so God just keeps bringing more and more people on board to yes. be able to help. It's a need. It's a great yeah. need. Yes. And when I spoke with the YMCA, they were just so excited to hear that a, a possible home would be coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. So, yeah. so that's, that's what good. you're currently Yes, that's what we're focusing on right now. Okay. We wanna, my heart has really been burdened with this. As God said, stop it before it gets there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. that's what we do is fight against trafficking. Yes, yes. And then when in doing that, we're coming alongside the poorest of the poor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, those that are orphans, widows, whatever, those that it would get caught the most. Yes. You know, foster kids are orphans. Yes, exactly. Yes. And they don't, people don't want to call it that, but that's what it is. They're orphans. Mm -hmm. They're in a home because they don't, their mom and dad cannot take care yeah. of them. So. Yeah, and they need to know that there's people out there that will care, care for yes. them, that will pray for them, mm -hmm. and the main thing that Jesus made them, that they are something. They are not throwaways. You know, and we've right. all been in different situations where we thought that we could not be used or changed, but God can. Right. You know, they have hope. That's they right. still have so, so much hope. Yeah. So don't give up. Yeah, yeah. there was, um, if I have got time, there's one lady yes. that... Um, as I was going out looking at, at houses, uh -huh. God um, told me to go to this one uh, house that was having an open house. Uh -huh. So I went, and the lady said, the real estate lady, she said, um, so what is it you're looking for? I told her, you know, mm -hmm. five acres at least or more, mm -hmm. five-bedroom home with three bedroom, or three bathrooms. And I told her we're trying to do a transition home for girls coming out of foster care, aging out. She stops. She looks at me and she goes, I don't normally tell anybody this, mm. but I was one of those kids. Mm. Oh, oh. And so she tells me her story mm. and how she was in Alaska and the state actually kicked her out at 17. Oh, Lord. And she had no place to go. So they searched for her father, who she mm. had never met and did not mm. know. They found him. Mm. And then they connected mm. her with him. Mm. Um, back over here in the Seattle area, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it didn't end up well wow. because they didn't know each other. Dad was married. All of a sudden, here's a child the new wife didn't know about. Oh my gosh! Um, so just... it ended up the poor girl was in the in the streets. I can I imagine that? I don't know how can they kick them out. Just yeah, it, it's all what? about the almighty dollar. Yeah, exactly. They know they won't get paid until you That's know right. after eighteen. They won't get anything. It's on their own unless they adopt them, and they're not going to do that. Uh, yeah, it's there it's, are, it's all about yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all about the money. Some of s yeah. these situations. There are some, some really of good them, ones. Yeah, and you know that's a, a lot too. Mm -hmm. If the churches, you know, there's anybody out there in the churches that are willing to take mm -hmm. a foster child in. Yes, that ages out. You know, if you've got an extra room. Oh, please, please think about doing that yeah, because. Yeah. That's going to save a child's life. Yes. 
And I see you have some keys for helping is um, invest and to pray and the mm -hmm. volunteer. Mm -hmm. All these things are so yeah. needed, you know, right. yeah. for these children. Mm -hmm. um, and we they have really volunteers need us. that are waiting uh -huh. for yeah. the houses to mm -hmm. be open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's um, tutors. Yeah. Yeah, we've got. You know, God has given you so. Good. Yeah, God is good. But we just need the house. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think about all that you oh. have done in the past too, and and you recently, you're trying to get two young girls right their visas Kenya. right from Kenya. Yeah. You know, get them out of danger. Right. You are remarkable. You know, mm -hmm. to do that. Lord's remarkable. Yes, that heart. <laughs> he gives us the heart for souls. I know. And they uh, say right? we're the minority. <laughs> we're the majority, really. Yes. You know, but yeah. So you do so much for so yeah, many, and you're, you. and it's such a blessing. Thanks. So where do you go from here? Right. We just keep continuing to put the word out. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's somebody out there, or some people out there that are willing to, that have a home that they've just sits there, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. that they would be able to invest mm -hmm. um, in the lives of these children. Yes. And that's yes. the way they need to look at it. It's not coming to us. Mm -hmm. It's investing in these kids' lives. Yes, exactly. And that's what I always tell people. You're not giving to me. You're giving through me. Right. Yeah. And to these children and to the world. And that's what we have to look at it like that. You know, mm -hmm. you want to make an investment, make an investment in this next generation, these, these children, you know, because they are, you know, the next generation. Right, exactly. You know? <laughs> and they're kind of, they're, so we they're need kind to invest of in them. lost in between yeah, there that yeah. nobody knows about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thinks, so. Oh, it just... Trafficking has to do with overseas. No, yeah, what happens right, right here? here. Mm, yeah, that's right, right here. Yeah. Um, so mm. it is. Yeah. Yes. It's just one of those things that nobody knows about and nobody thinks about. Yes. So. But we have to keep, you know, talking about it and yes. and keep letting people know that this thing is real. You know, right. it can happen right. to anybody. It can happen to their children. They don't know. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. a lot. And uh, it's so many times that people have said that their children, are, uh, you know, went to the mall or went somewhere mm -hmm. and didn't return home. That's you right. Know? Oh, that's, that's right. So. You know? That's horrible. And it's and it's just that simple because they what they do is and there was one incident where um a couple of girls we had trained um had gone into the mall at South Center mm -hmm. and three men walked up to them as they were sitting and eating and had jewelry and wanted to mm. take them out to their truck. Mm. They said they had more jewelry in the truck, in the back of the truck that they were selling at at, at cost. Yeah. Yeah. And um they realized from the training that they got what this was really about mm -hmm. and they stood up as and just got bigger than big mm -hmm. and said we know what you're doing and she just shouted it and um they took off running oh that's wow. good but it Praise saved the them Lord. you know yes. so yeah, yeah, yeah educating your children is even though they say oh mom yeah no nah, nah, no it's not going to happen to me don't listen to it train them mm -hmm. because when it happens mm -hmm. it'll come mm -hmm. So it'll come back to him what to do. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I know a lady who had her her daughter was trafficked, and uh, she had went off with a friend of hers, you know, but she didn't know mm -hmm. that her daughter was being groomed, oh, you know, yeah. over oh, the, yeah. oh, um, you know, on the, oh, on the line, oh, on online. Line. Okay, she had she was being groomed, and it, and she they built up this what they call trauma bond, right, with exactly. this girl, exactly. and uh, her and her friend they went off and they had went off with this young man that th she thought that was you know somebody who loved her and cared mm -hmm. about her mm -hmm. and that was going to introduce her to people I guess to oh, to Lord. help you know because she was beautiful mm -hmm. you know she she wanted to also be a model mm -hmm. and so she got with this other girl and it was another uh this this other girl and they met at a truck truck stop mm -hmm. and they picked them up the and they spot. were missing yes at a truck stop just yeah. like that Hot and spot. all of a sudden, the guy who had brought them there had left them, and they was like, where is my ride? Mm -hmm. And then this other uh, guy picked them up and took them off. And wow. you see, and the mother was looking for her for months and months and months. And yes. so it happened, she went to what they call back page, yes. and she happened okay. to see her underwear, her child's underwear. And she said, that's my child. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, and and they found him from there. But I'm just saying the things that that happen so quickly. You know, these children are being groomed. You gotta. We have to pay attention to mm -hmm. what they're doing online. It's very vital. You yeah. know, not not only online, but you need to be paying attention in your neighborhood. Yes, in neighborhoods. Yeah, yes. there was a gentleman that was um, 
reported in in Kent mm -hmm. where he had done I think it was if I'm I don't quote me but I'm trying to remember it was like a hundred yeah. girls within eight months oh. six or eight months that he had trafficked through his home oh my um, lord Can you I know and that? they had him in jail I never yeah. did hear the results yeah. of what yeah. you know yeah. his conviction but you just have to be aware. You have to ever. be aware, yeah. yes. And I know some of the issues, like we talked about before, the issues we talk about are real. Right. A lot of them are sensitive and horrific, you know, but we got to keep our joy, you know. Yes, we, we have do. to keep our joy and keep our minds, <laughs> yes. you know. And I, I, I thought about this morning about um, a TV show that I used to host, and it was called Joy in Our Town. But we talked about horrific, terrible things and the conditions of the world and things like that. But the Lord is telling us to keep your joy through it mm -hmm. because joy is like a military term. It keeps your mind just right. like peace and joy. Right. It's all a part of it, you know. So we live in this world, but we're not of this world. But we have to continue to keep our joy right. through all of it, you know, yeah. knowing that God's going to, you know, everything is going to work out in the end because, you know, because he has a better place for us. But, yeah, we have to keep our joy and know that things are going to work out. You right. know, we have to do that. We can't. Remember what Jesus said, for the joy that's laid up before me, I do all this. He went to the cross knowing that the joy that was laid up before him. Now, who does that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he was going to take on the whole world's sin and all yeah, of this, exactly. you know, for the joy that's set before him. Yeah. So I'm just encouraging you out there, especially this time of the year. Yes. You know, you might have a missing child out there or, mm -hmm. or a loved one who's passed away or something like that mm -hmm. but please hold on to your joy yes. you know know that this is not it I always tell people that when God said when he when we see our redemption drawing near he said rejoice didn't he didn't he say that yeah he, didn't he? Because he knows he has better plans for her. All this is going to pass away. We're going to have a new heaven, new earth, and all of that. So rejoice. And while you are here, pray for your loved ones. You know, yes, pray for yes. them. And don't condemn them. Yeah, pray for their protection. Amen. Because these children, they need us. They need yes. our prayers. Yes. Prayer is so powerful. Yeah. You know. And it's a, and it's a huge attack on the children. Yes, um, yes. The enemy enemy knows that's you know that's our heart yes and so it it, it is it's a huge attack on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah he knows um, our hearts you know yeah. we have a heart for souls you know yeah. yes yes but we have to um pray for those children and yes. you know pray for their safeties and pray for the attention that people that will listen yes. to what's being said yes you know yeah they have to listen to this because you you experience this all around the world, like just not here in America, but in other countries. And right. you see how real this is. And you told me about the hundreds and hundreds of of children mm -hmm. that just disappeared. Yeah, there was a an incident in uh, this is trafficking of organs uh, incident in Honduras just where they found a truck Honduras. that was um, full of <sighs> this is hard, but it's. Um, little children's bodies and oh, gosh. it was full of these bodies and their chests were oh, their whole bodies God. were opened up and empty of their organs oh, and remember. so it's you know it's something that it's so, horrific yes. um, they don't want to put that out there but mm. we've got to know it we have we've to got know to be it. I mean it just takes one one second for a child to disappear yeah. if you're not watching them yeah. Um, and that's it. that includes teens. Yes. It, it doesn't take much, you know. So you've always got to be, you don't want to be what they call a helicopter mom, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but nowadays, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but you almost <laughs> have to. You almost have to because it's gotten to yeah, that yeah. point. Yeah. So educating, yeah. I think, is the best thing you can do for your mm -hmm. children. Yeah. My granddaughter, um, when she was young, I I made sure, I was, I was teaching her, like Taekwondo mm. and a few things. And then as she got older and I knew she was vulnerable, my daughter got into, got her into uh, martial arts. Mm. And I pity the man who tries to <laughs> take her. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so it's, you know, yes. you've got to educate. You have to educate. I see our time is about to wind out, Lydia. But thank you so much for being here. But thank you for having me. Please speak to our audience and, and just, mm -hmm. just speak from the heart. If I have anything to say, um, I would just please, please educate your children. Mm. They won't let us into the schools to tell them. So all I can do is have you educate. Yeah. 
-hmm. Make sure you do your research. Make sure that you, um, as you're educating your children, that there's always love behind it. Yes. Um, that they know that it's, you're telling them this because you love them, not because you're demanding them mm -hmm. to do something, but because you love them so much that you want to protect them, but you don't want to be a helicopter mom. <laughs> um, so please, if there's anything that I can say, please educate. educate. Educate your children to keep them safe. Don't let them go anywhere alone. Even two now is hard, is um, not safe. Yes. So yeah. just, um, and if there's anyone out there that has a heart and wants to, has a home that they're willing to give um, for a transition home, we would just greatly appreciate it, and we would yes. totally be blessed for those kids. Yes. Yeah. And we have your contact number yes. below on the screen. My contact number is here um, if they need to get a hold of me for okay. any more information. Well, thank you so much oh, for the information you and sharing your me. heart today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, our time is out. We love you. You know God loves you. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Greater Faith Outreach Ministries with Pastor Elizabeth, reaching the world with the love of God. If you'd like prayer or a copy of today's program, log on to www.greaterfaithoutreach.com or call 253-324-7902.